you have your Bibles, why don't you go to Genesis with me, Genesis 1 and 26. We won't be that long. Just want to set a foundation. I'm going to talk to you today about a king with a slave mentality. I said a king with a slave mentality. God has called us king. The Bible says he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. So he has made us kings. We are kings and priests unto our God. But if you have a slave mentality, you never walk in your kingship. So I say a king with a slave mentality. Genesis 1 and 26. And you're going to have to change the way you see things if you're going to walk in your kingship. Every conflict that we have, you're going to have to put your mouth on. The Bible said death and life is in the power of the tongue. And them that love it will eat its fruit. You living today what you said on yesterday. Right. If you don't like where you are, change what you say. I said every conflict, you're going to have to put your mouth to work. See, you're going to have to learn how to talk like a king. Walk like a king. Act like a king. See, see, smell like a king. <laughs> you, you know, you said something there, like devil. Let me tell you something. When they anoint a king, when they put that anoint all on the king, let me tell you, they put, they just put a drop on it. But the thing is so rare and so pure that you can smell a king before you see. It. Come on. Amen. Come on. So when she says smell, I don't even think she had the revelation. <laughs> Amen. I'm telling you, you can smell a king. For miles away. That's why, listen, when they anointed a king, when he was coming into the city, before they saw him, they smelled him. Yeah. People said, the king is coming. The king is coming. Not because they saw him, but they smelled him. Yeah. That anointing was on his life. Yeah. Remember when the Bible says when the lady broke the alabaster box right. of oil, yeah. the aroma flowed through the whole city. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody in the city knew something happened at that house. Because the fragrance was everywhere. But we're kings. How many believe there are king and queens in this place? Don't put your hand up if you don't believe me. <laughs> Amen. You like this, you ain't sure you're a prince. I say kings and priests. Amen. Hallelujah. Kings and priests unto our God. Kings and queens. Amen. Genesis 126. Genesis 1.26. Did I pray? Let me pray. Father, I did pray, didn't I? No. I didn't. Okay, let's pray. <laughs> Father, we thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your holy word. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of your calling. What's the exceeding greatness of your power to us with the believe. We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hide me behind the cross so only you can be seen. This is my prayer. Yes. In Jesus' name, and all the believers, say amen. 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 Now let me just lay a foundation. First of all, the Bible is not a religious book. No. The Bible is a constitution of a country called hell. The Bible is about a king, his kingdom, and his royal family. In, 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 the, in the book of Peter, 1 Peter 1 and 9, it says, uh, 2 and 9, it says that you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. Now, God can say a lot of things about you, but until you receive that for yourself, you're never going to walk in your kingship. Now, that's why I said every battle, every conflict, you're going to have to put your mouth on it. You know, let me tell you why I say that. Because whatever you decree, the Bible says decree a thing right. and it'll be. Right. Now listen, 
Kings don't pray for things. Kings decree some things. Where the word of king is, there is what? Power. So you need to use your authority to speak some things into the existence. Yeah. If the Bible says, Jesus said, listen, the works I do shall you do also, and greater works than these, because I go to my father. So can we be just like God? Can we operate like him? He gave us his authority. Or do you believe that? Let's like read it first. Let's read. Wait a minute. Let's read. Genesis 126. It says, God said, let us make man in our image. Let me tell you what image means. It means with the same characteristics and nature. In, in my likeness. Uh, with the ability to function like me. That's image. Now, I want to make man in our image and in my likeness. And let them have dominion. Let them have control. Let them have radar. Let them have authority. Let them have rulership. So really, God raised up a body or family so that they could dominate the earth. The church ain't dominating nothing right now. Because they don't know who they are. But God's going to teach us how to move into rulership. God wants us to dominate every area of life. But you can't dominate when you don't know who you are. Hmm. You know, I like to tell people this. If you don't know where, who you are, somebody will tell you. That's right. If you don't know where you're going, somebody will tell you. Amen. Amen. Listen at this. If he gave us that authority, he said he gave us the authority or the dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, over everything that creeps on the earth. He even gave us authority over creeks. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got authority over all things. But you can't exercise that authority if you don't know that you have it. That's right. So the devil uses your authority against you a lot of times. Well, I want you to understand something. In the book, I want you to go with Mark 11.23 with me. Amen. Mark 11.23. Mark 11.23. Mark 11.23. So we can lay a foundation. When you get it, say amen. amen. Mark 11 and 23. Amen. Got it? Yes. Everybody got it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 11 and 23, but we start at 22. You say, have faith in God, or have the God kind of faith. But shall I say unto you, whoever says to this mountain, yes. be removed and be cast into the sea, Amen. and does not doubt in his heart, but believe those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Okay. Now that's the word of God. He says, whoever says to this mountain, what is a mountain? An obstacle. A mountain is a problem in your life that you can't deal with. Right? And the Bible says that you can speak to the mountain and it has to obey you if you don't doubt in your heart. Is that right? I said, is that right? Am I right about it? Okay, that's what the Bible says. That we can speak to the mountain and it will obey us. Now our problem is we don't speak to our mountain. When we're dealing with a situation, instead of us exercising our faith against the mountain, we're crying to God to deal with a situation he already gave you the power to deal with. Yeah, that's right. Why are you asking God about something he already gave you the ability to have? See, too many times, we're under the circumstance. Yeah, yeah. People say, how you doing? I'm all right under the circumstance. I say, well, why are you under the circumstance? God said you ought to be on top of the circumstance. We're more than countless through Christ. See, yesterday was a perfect example. We had to pick, I had so many people call, you ought to care for things, well and fair. I said, did you not read in the Bible? Elisha prayed and it didn't rain for three and a half months. Come on, come on. Yeah. Three and a half years. Okay. I said, I'm only asking for a day. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 
Now listen, that don't mean we're not gonna have some conflict. That's not, that, that, that doesn't mean you're not gonna have some problems. That's right, that's right. Listen, oh, we had a lot of people show up. We had a great time, but guess what? A whole bunch of them didn't know what we dealt with before they got it. Come on, Come on, We got to the pub, and the pub was locked up. Uh -huh. We couldn't get the truck in, we couldn't move the equipment. Pulled up, I called the guy, said, man, the gate locked. Oh, I forgot, he said, we locked the gate. We didn't want nobody to go drive in and tear up the yard. I said, well, what are we going to do about having this picnic? He said, cut the lock off. So, we, that's the other thing. <laughs> so listen, now we standing out there, I got a truck full of equipment. We, we got people coming in the next 30 minutes, and we're dealing with a conflict. We could have got discovered. The clouds were dark. It looked like it's going to stone. It's wet in the park. The park is locked up. Everything to tell you, quick, go home. Most of y'all would have went home. Don't text it, people. Let them know. Don't come. <laughs> Devil is a You know what happened? We kicked in. Everybody kicked in action. My wife said, look, I'm going to Home Depot. We're going to buy a locked up. I said, OK, we're going to unload the truck. The ones that was out there, we started loading hauling tables and everything else. Y'all didn't see none of that. When y'all came, everything was set. All you had to do was sit down and eat. But you didn't see the conflict. But guess what? We declared some things. We decreed something. I said, look, I don't care what it looks like. We're going to have a good time. Get all the good. Yeah, yeah. Look, we are be running to solve problems. Y'all right. running from problems. Come on, come on. Nobody wants to deal with anything. Yes, come on. How you gonna overcome if you don't overcome something? Yeah, come on, Pastor. If you don't have a problem, how you gonna become an overcome? Yeah. Every time something happens, why me? Why not you? Listen to this. <laughs> when you are murmuring and complaining and blaming others or, or taking the victim mentality, Come on. Come on. you got the wrong mindset. Yes. Yes. How many times you become the victim? Mm -hmm. Or if not, you victimize somebody else. Mm -hmm. Somebody else got to be at the blame. That's right. Instead of taking control of your situation. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You are kings and priests unto our God. Amen. You're going to have to walk like a king. Right. Stop accepting everything. Listen, somebody knock on that door and they got a package for me and it's not it's not mine. Well, I'm gonna tell them we're at the wrong house. Well, That's what you gotta tell the devil. Yeah. He come knocking at the door with a chest pan. <laughs> you open the door. What you open the door for? <laughs> and then have you open the door when it huh? That ain't for you. 
Get get behind me, devil. Both of right. y'all right. come on in. <laughs> now you got the pain, you took the pain. <laughs> now you're asking God to move the pain. The Lord already gave you the authority to resist the pain. Right. Right. Listen, we gonna have to learn how to put our mouth on some things. Right. We we don't use what God gave us. I say death. Say that death yeah. and life. Yeah. Yeah. It's what? In the power of the tongue. Bless it. In the power of the tongue. In the power of the tongue. In the power of your tongue. tongue. It's in the power of your tongue. People say, well, we don't believe in being people. Y'all don't believe they have devils. Let me tell you, the demon world is real. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I said the demon real. The real the, the life of the demon is real. And it manifests through people all the time. You know, I told you all the time, sometimes the demons are show up in the church. And the people put the man out the church instead of putting the demon out the man. Right. Come on, but do you know we legalize the demons, right? Because the demon has to go through a legal system to get in your life. I said he has to go through a legal system to get in your life. You can't just, let me tell you, especially if you got Christ in your heart, you could be demonized, but you can't be demon possessed. That means you could be under the influence of a demon in your mind, attacking your mind. But listen, if you open yourself to a demonic force, it's because of one or two things. The only way a devil can walk in your life legally is if you got some kind of sin, offense, guilt, some kind of condemnation, some kind of uh, drug addiction, some kind of alcoholism. You open the door for the devil. You open the door. And if you legalize his ability to come in, you're going to have to put him out. It's like I let somebody come live with me for a couple of months. Then I say, look, now it's time to go. I ain't leaving. You know, they got this thing now where you can't even put him out. What? A squad. You ain't going to squat here long, my boy. Stay right there. Be right there. You ain't going to squat. You ain't going to squat. You ain't going to squat. Lay down. <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. You can't legalize that. Let me, let me tell you a story. I had a little brother. He was on drugs a little bit, but he got himself clean, free. But his wife was drugged. She'd be gone two, three days at a time. He was fasting and praying because he was believing God for to deliver her. Right, right. You know, she's gone three days, you don't know where she is and what she's doing. But he was talking, but he was praying and fasting and believing God. Right. He said she came home about three days later, went in there and slept for almost eight, nine hours. He said he was praying over while she was in the bed. Lord, he said, I want my wife, I'm praying, praying for my wife, Lord, I love my wife, this, that, and I want deliverance. He said, finished praying, he's just in meditation, and he had a vision. In a vision, he saw a bunch of old people run out the house. He said he cast that devil off her, broke that thing off her life. He said a bunch of old people ran through the house. He said, I heard footsteps and everything. Went through the wall. You heard what I said? They didn't go out the door, they went through the wall. He said, Lord have mercy. He said, this demon stuff is real. This girl done brought all these demons in the house. The Bible says, when an unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walk in dry places and he seeks rest. And if he doesn't find a place to get rest, guess where he goes? Back to the house where he came from. And he brings in others with him. And the, the last state becomes worse than the first. Yeah, you're right. He said, after I saw that, I went outside. I needed to take a smoke, I told him. That had tripped me out so bad. So I'm standing on the post smoking a cigarette. And there's an old man, like I saw in the vision, coming up the street. And he said, when the old man got right in front of my door, he turned around, pointed his finger at me and said, I'm not leaving. I paid my rent. I'm not leaving. I said, look at that. He said, you heard what I said? I'm not leaving. I paid my rent. And what he was saying was, I have a legal right to stay here. She has given me that right, and you can't make me leave. See? In order for the devil to leave, you got to make him leave. You let him in. That's like you let him let somebody in there. Daddy, come get him out. You won't leave. You open the door and let him in, didn't you? 
Get that big old club behind the bed. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Hey, man, I don't know how we got away over there. Let's get back. Listen at this. Every conflict, you got to put your mouth on. You got to put your mouth to work. King doesn't ask for anything. They declare things. That's right. I say they declare some things. Y'all yeah, right. gonna have to go home and declare that this house, yeah. this house is God's house. Amen. And everything that's not like God gotta get out of here. In Jesus' name, I mean, I didn't get it. I didn't see a time when we got in, me and my wife, I said, man, listen, I went out there, we cast the devils out, I came home, look like one of them followed me home. I ain't lying to you. Amen. I said, something ain't right with his ear in his house. I told my wife, look, let's take the authority over this demon. We took authority over the demonic force. I opened the door. I said, I'll never get out of here. See, you got to be fit, or you got to be on purpose, intentional. I said, get out in Jesus' name. You have no right to be here. Right. Guess what happened? The devil left and slammed the door when he left. Right. Nobody touched the door. Boom! I told my wife, whoa, got out of here. <laughs> slammed the door and left. He left mad, but he left. Y'all right. need to get some of the demons out your house. Yeah, man. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, the anointing is on our lives for leadership. But we got to believe that. You got to receive that by faith. You can't walk by how you feel. Feelings come and feelings go. Even with your help. Listen, if the lady with the issue of blood would have settled for what she had, she would have stayed sick. But the Bible says she put her mouth on. You know what she said? If I could just touch the hem. Of uh, this going. Right, right. I'll be made whole. What was she doing? She was decreeing something. Uh, listen, the circumstances, the Bible says she went to every doctor and couldn't get better. Right, right. Spent every dime she had. But guess what? She realized if I could just touch, what was she doing? She was putting her mouth on some things. She was decreeing some things. And look, Everybody out there, there was a crowd of people out there. She had to crawl through the crowd. And then she was considered to be unclean because she had a blood issue. She continued to bleed. You would think that, you know, everybody thought her, she was unclean. She can't touch a rabbi. You better not touch a rabbi. She didn't even want to touch a rabbi. She said, I just want to touch the head of his goat. I, I, I just need to grab one tassel. Because every tassel represents a promise. Uh -huh. The Bible says she pushed through the crowd. And when she laid hold on the hem, virtue flowed out. Yes, what brought her here? She already, her faith made her hope. That's right, Devin. Her faith made her hope. And the Bible said virtue flowed out. Look what Jesus said. Who touched me? Think about that. We had a crowd of concert people pushing and shoving, trying to get to the front. And you asked me who touched me. With all these people, that's right. he said, no, 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 somebody touched me oh, with faith. Oh, I said, somebody touched me with faith. Yes. That's what you need to do today. You need to touch God with faith. I don't care what you're struggling with. You're going to have to touch him with faith. Glory to God. Because faith is the only way you're going to reach God. Faith is the currency of hell. I'm close. Let me tell you something. There was a young, baby, a young lady in the Bible in 2 Kings, the fourth chapter, a Shunammite woman. Mm -hmm. Had no child. Had a big heart. Mm -hmm. The prophet would come through the city all the time. So she decided to tell her husband, since the prophet comes so regular, let's build a little room on the back of the house for him so he'll have somewhere to sleep and eat and read his Bible. Get a little lamp, a little bed. Yeah. Uh -huh. That was beautiful. That's hospitality. That's what the city of New Orleans is known for. Hospitality. Sometimes we forget. So people want to come over and you ain't hospitable. But anyway, she was very hospitable. So she built this little room for him. You listen to me? I'm talking about you. <laughs> built this little room for him. And every time he came, he visited. And so the last time he came, he told his servant, he said, go ask the little widow, is there anything I can do for her? 
I need to speak to the king, or if I need to go and speak to one of the leadership or whatever, whatever. She said, no, this is her words. I'm good. All right. I guess, you know what we say, I'm, I'm good. Pookaloo yeah, yeah. tell me that all the time. I say, Pookaloo, you need anything? I'm good. <laughs> a grown man, I'm good. He got the audacity to come in the back and go, say, Papa, you all right? I said, well, if I ain't all right, what you gonna do about it? Praise <laughs> God. But anyway, the lady built this room for the man. He wanted to do something for her. She said she was good. But his servant said, she don't have any children. Hmm. So he said, oh, so he's okay. So he called in the next day, he said, listen, he stood in his door, he prophesied to her, he said, about this time next year, you won't have a child. Come on. This is our words. She said, man of God, because that's why she built the place, because she believed he was a man of God. He said, man of God, don't lie to me. She been wanting a child all her life. She said, don't lie to me. I went and looked it up. This what it, this what it really said. Don't lie to me and let what you say be authorized. By God and let it end well. That's what she said. In other words, I believe you're a man of God. I believe that with all my heart. But don't do it if it ain't authorized from God. Because I need it to end well. So she got her child. So I do a lot of study. A uh, couple months later, her son was out there working with his dad. They were out there reaping. He told his dad, he said, my head, my head. Daddy said, his head was hurting real bad. So his daddy said, take him to his mother. I knew a lot of times men are real insensitive. Mm -hmm. Go to your mom. <laughs> Go to your mom. <laughs> so he sent him to his mother. The mama got him, brought him upstairs, put him on her knee. He eventually died. The mama took him, laid him in the bed with the prophet. Sleep. Laid him in the prophet's bed. Put her clothes on, got her Sunday best on. She asked her husband to send her a servant who could bring her to see the prophet. Mm -hmm. Now remember, she told him, listen, let it be authorized and let it end well. Right. This don't seem like well to me. <laughs> but I want you to understand yeah. something. That, that lady put her mouth on what she believed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Check right. this out. She got the man, she said, send me a servant to take me. Her husband said, where are you going? She said, go and see the prophet. He said, but it ain't new moon and it ain't Saturday. In other words, you can't go unless it's these two. She said, all is well. 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 Say that with me. All, all is, is well. well. She gets on her house. She tell the guy, she said, come on, let's go. She said, and don't make hate. In other words, put the pedal to the metal. <laughs> In my turn. Now with the Gregory version. They got down there. When the prophet saw her afar off, he sent the servant. He said, go see if everything is well with the widow. So the servant got there, he said, is all well with you? She said, all is well. All is, well. is all well with your husband? All is well. Man, wait, 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 she had many opportunities to say, look, things are going crazy, my child's dead. She got a dead baby upstairs. How could she declare that all is well? And she told him, let it be authorized, yeah. and let it end well. Amen. He asked her the third time, she said, everything right with your baby? She said, all is well. All is well. When she got to the prophet, she laid hold on his ankles, grabbed his feet, wouldn't let him go. The prophet tried, to, his servant tried to take her apart. He said, let her alone. He said, she's going through some distress, and God didn't show her what's going on. He went back to the house, went in that room, laid on the child, Breed on the child, and the child got warm, but he didn't come back. He went downstairs, walked around, went back up there, and laid on the child, and the child sneezed seven times and came back up again. Guess what? That lady refused to take no as an answer. She already said, if you say, I'm going to have a child, then let it end well. Let what you say be authorized. See, if we to settle, if she to quit, the first time the man asked, it's all well, she could have broke down. She could have broke down, she said, Lord, my child, I left him back there, he did this, that. No, no, we got to put your mouth on something. You got to stop settling for the pain knocking on your door. Amen. I don't care how bad it seems. I know y'all all got help 
stuff that you're dealing with, but that's all we're doing is dealing with it. That's right, baby. I'm not taking ownership to none of that stuff. That's right, that's right, that's right. Oh, yeah, I know I'm being attacked with diabetes and everything else. Right, Let me baby. tell you something. You got to fight for your health. Come on. You got to fight for your sight. Oh, you got to yeah. fight for your hearing. Yeah. You can settle for anything if you want to. Come on, Pastor. Wake up in the morning and drag your foot. Man, you better make that foot work. Yeah, talk to the foot. I talk to the leg. Talk to the toe. Whatever it is, you gotta talk to it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Death you're right. and life is when? Where is that? In whose tongue? In your tongue. That's right. I know my time. Amen. I ain't out of revelation. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. We have to finish this another day when we run out of time. What time is it? 10 17. Praise God. <laughs> Listen at this. I'm going to give you one more question. For time's sake, we're talking about 12 spies. 12 spies in the book of Numbers. Numbers 13 and 17. You don't have to go there. 13 and 17. The Bible says that they sent 12 spies to spy out the land. See if the land was flowing with milk and honey. The grapes was everything they said it was. The Bible says when they got down there, the land was flowing with milk and honey. God promised Israel that he was going to give them a land that flowed with milk and honey. Canaan was the promised land for the nation of Israel. Just like the Bible is the promised book for the church. We just hadn't learned how to use it yet. So they went down there and they found out that everything they said about the land was true. So when they came back, the ten, they came back and said, look, they had the grapes was big as your head, uh, but <laughs> one grape, big as your head. The cluster was so big, it said it took two of them to carry. Mm -hmm. Now you can imagine what two carried. It was 12 of them that went, that 10 was backslidden pastors. <laughs> and two preachers that believed God. Right. They came back, they told them, they said, the 10 said, look, the land is flowing with milk and honey, but they got giants in the land. The land is walled out. And we, we can't, in other words, we can't defeat them. See, our problem is, we start looking at our situation, and every time you look at your situation, it gets bigger. Yeah, you're right. Instead of looking at your goal. If you look at your God, your situation gets small. Yeah, but right. if you look at your situation, your God gets small. You can tell what you've been looking at based on where you are. Come on, man. Come on. Those 10 people came back and gave them an evil report. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, Caleb said, Quiet! Quiet! He said, we are more than able to take the land. Yeah. See, he put his mouth on In other words, I don't care what they say. God gave us this land, and we are more than able to take it. See, you're going to have to get this victory mentality. Yeah. And no matter what the enemy throw against you, you know you'll overcome. Come on, Let me come tell on, you, Pastor. Yes. There's nothing that can come through your life. Right. Before it goes through his nail printed hands. Amen. And when it goes through his hands, he massages it so it'll do you good. Yeah. So it's going to work yeah. to your good. You may have to go through it, but you're not going to stay there. You're coming out. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank he you. said, I'm going to lead you through the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. went through the valley. Yeah. You just ain't going to stay there. <laughs> See, because the devil has no victory over those who know who they are Come on, in man. Christ. Yeah, Lord. Praise Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. 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 Come on.